Somchenkoi. Please be seated. Le président. Veuillez vous asseoir. The chamber announces the resumption of the proceedings. Now the chamber announces the oral ruling on Nunjia's request uh, pursuant to Internal Rule 87.4 to admit new evidence. Concerning the Nunjia defense request, to admit as new evidence a color copy of various Cambodian La bank notes. The chamber notes that this document was used in court, court yesterday on 12 August 2015 without any objections. The document is the colorized version of a black and white document already on the case file. Document E3-4535 at ERN 00-68. 0068527 and 0068572. The chamber therefore grants the Nunchia request. However, the chamber reminds the parties that if they intend to use in court a document that is not on the case file, they must file a request in advance and not at the last minute in court. Now, Mr. Prosecutor, you may resume your examination. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon to all. Merci. Sir, when you worked at the Trapiang Tamal Dam, were you aware of any visits of people from Phnom Penh? No, that I did not know, because at that time I was engaged uh, with my assigned task. So whenever there was a visit from other people, I was not aware. Okay, thank you. Now, when we ended this morning, you would explain that um, after your, you were removed from the assignment of collecting fertilizer and given a job distributing rice, who did you distribute rice to? Was it to a mobile brigade was to a district sector. Mais où distribuez-vous ce test une brigade mobile ou dans un bureau de district? For the rice, it was uh, distributed uh, within the uh, sectors uh, committee. Dans les comités de secteur. When you say it was distributed within the sectors committee, I'm a bit confused. Does that mean you distributed the rice throughout the sector, sector five, or do you mean only to the committee members? Can you explain? So uh, it was on mobile brigade of the sectors. We did not distribute to the uh, people directly. Uh, we distributed to the mobile brigade uh, subordinate to the uh, sector. How many people received the rice that you distributed? How many workers were there at that time?
to my recollections uh, for the people at the times there were around 20,000 people uh, they were on mobile workforce where did you receive the rice from At the time when I was assigned to the distribution task, I had to collect uh, the uh, rice from the uh, cooperative uh, of uh, the district, and then we had to uh, unhask the rice, and then we distributed uh, it uh, back. Okay, so you took the rice from the cooperatives that were growing rice, and then distributed it took it to a warehouse, Et if I understand correctly, and then distributed it to the workers, to approximately 20,000 workers. Is that correct? Did I understand correctly? I don't want to put, I'm just trying to see if I understand you. Yes, that is correct. Uh, sir, these numbers, are, I know that you're making estimates, but in your written uh, inter in your interview with DC CAM at uh, page, the CAMI is 0072822, the French 0112373131, and in English it's 0073-1139. You said you distributed it to 32,000 workers. Um, can you just explain, do you think it was 20,000 or 32,000? Can you explain the difference? When they convene a meeting uh, to put forth uh, the plan, uh, they uh, told us that uh, the mobile brigade uh, members uh, accounted for more than 20,000 people and they were subject to be given the rice. Okay, thank you. When you distributed the rice, who did you give it to? Did you give it to individual workers or did you give it to leaders? Who did you take the rice to? À qui ce riz a-t-il été remis? Réponse. Uh, the mobile brigades uh, were all from the district. Les so there were their representative. As we distributed the rice to their representative in uh, each uh, uh, mobile uh, brigade. Do you recall now how the rice was kept? Was it in bags? Or how did you actually give it to them? Yes, uh, we uh, put the rice in the bag and then we store them. And on the distribution days, uh, we would distribute uh, the rice in back. Did you distribute rice every day or every week? How often would it be distributed? Uh, when we were on the offensive uh, at that time, we distributed uh, sometimes uh, once every three days. The word, by the way, you used offensive. Um, well, I'm familiar with that as a military term, but what did you mean by the word offensive? What, what did it mean at that time when you used that word? The word offensive in this uh, means that at that time we had to make uh, our, uh, we had to do our level base uh, to accomplish a plan or uh, a target set, and then we try to accomplish that. And that was uh, called the offensive. So, about how many bags would you distribute per day? Combien de sacs distribuez-vous par jour? Vous 
reports. We distributed it uh, accordingly uh, to uh, the representative coming to receive uh, the distribution. For example, uh, there are 400 cans of rice per bag, and then it all depended on the day when the representative of each uh, mobile brigade came on the day, and we had to do the division uh, based on the numbers of people coming to collect it. For example, if they receive uh, three cans per day, then it had to be divided accordingly. Thank you. But I'm just asking if you can, if you recall now, do you recall how many bags you distributed in a day or in a month? Do you recall what that statistic was? To my estimation, uh, three cans uh, per person, and sometimes uh, we distribute it uh, up to 30 back uh, per day, depending on the location of the uh, mobile brigades uh, where we distributed it. So do you mean 30 bags per day were distributed from your warehouse to different in a total, 30 bags per day to different districts. Do I understand correctly? So some bag, maybe three districts each got 10 for a total of 30? Is that what you mean? Yes, it depended on the... Uh, the labor force uh, of the district, uh, it was in proportionate uh, to the labor force. So on one day, we would distribute it to the mobile brigade of one district, and then the other day with another mobile brigade in another district. A uh, can of rice, uh, do you recall approximately how many kilos that was, or what part of a kilo? was in one can of rice. Une canette de riz. Cela, quel était le poids d'une canette de riz Vous nous donnez une, une idée en kilogramme. Four cans of rice uh, is uh, one uh, kg, and then one can. Then we can do the calculation here. It is divided by four. We can do the calculation altogether, uh, how, how much it weighs. Okay, so it's a quarter of a kilo per can. And just so we understand, the cans that you're talking about that were used, were these the condensed milk cans? But yes, uh, that is correct. Oui. It was uh, by a condensed milk can. So that would mean that in a hundred kilos, you would have uh, four hundred. Um, four hundred cans of rice. And I believe you previously said that, that one bag equaled uh, 400 cans. So were the bags then, did they weigh 100 kilos each? Yes, one bag uh, weighs 100 uh, kilograms. Thank you. Now, Question. what happened if people Question. were not able to meet their quota? Did they receive the full ration of three cans per day or whatever the ration was for that day? The President. Uh, witness, please uh, hold on. Uh, Counsel for Mr. Kilsenpon, you may proceed. Counsel Kilsenpon, thank you, Mr. Uh, President. I would like to object uh, against this question because this question invites speculation from the uh, part of the witness.
And the question was, based on his experience, of course, when someone did not meet their quota, did they receive their full ration or not? I'm not asking you to speculate. I'm asking you what you saw when you were working there. On this issue, whether or not uh, they achieved the quota or not, uh, it depended on uh, the decision of their respective uh, unit uh, chief. As for us, uh, we uh, were only assigned to distribute uh, the rice, so it all depended on the uh, unit chief uh, to uh, tell us. Now, when you were working in that sector mobile brigade, did you have contact with the sector, excuse me, when you were distributing rice, working distributing rice for the sector mobile brigade, did you have contact with the secretary of sector 5? No. Uh, at that time, uh, sometimes the uh, sector committee came down uh, to inspect uh, the uh, quantity of rice and the distribution. And sometimes he sent his uh, delegate, for example, uh, a month uh, they were supposed to transport uh, to the place for uh, 4,000 bags. And then if uh, they uh, supply, for example, 6,000 bags, uh, how many bags left after? the distribution, so they came over uh, to uh, inspect uh, the distribution and the quantity of rice available. Who was the sector leader when you're, or sector leaders when you were in that position distributing rice? Bon Rin, Brother Rin. Can you tell us something about Rin? Where was he from? Brother Rin uh, was from the southwest zone. Do you recall the town that he was from or the province? That I do not know. I only know that he uh, came from the uh, zone. At that time, uh, it was not easy to ask uh, people about their uh, personal detail. Thank you. We don't want you to guess. Thank you for telling us that. Now, tell us a little bit about Rin's, uh, what he was like as a leader of the sector. How was he as the sector leader? Can you give us any details about that? It was based on my personal experience. Uh, personality wide. Whenever he got there, uh, he would uh, go straight uh, to take the hole or the earth uh, carrying basket and he would went down, uh, uh, would go down with the workers and he uh, did together with others. I mean, he worked together with others. Is that what you mean? Yes, he uh, helps uh, the uh, brigade, uh, the mobile brigades uh, at the time. Sometimes even the members did not uh, know that he was there because the way he dressed, the way he behaved was uh, more ordinary than uh, the members there. What happened to Rin? Do you know his fate?
Ne, byl. Réponse. Let on, he was uh, removed, Il a été retiré. and I Ensuite, did not know uh, where he had gone to. Uh, he disappeared. Il a disparu. Thank you, Mr. Witness, and just <coughs> for your Mr. honors, Merci, um, there are two documents Et relevant to the fate of Rin. One is E3 2254 in Kumai. The page, the relevant page with the ERN is 00-86766. In French, it is 00-834-853. And in English, it is 00-789-707. It's indicated on that list from S21 that RIN was, quote, finished, unquote, in 1978. And we also have a document, E3, slash 7403, which is purportedly the confession of Rin. The President. Mr. Prosecutor, uh, could you please uh, slow down when it comes to reading the uh, year and number so that it is clear for the record? Certainly. Should I repeat any of them? Okay. Again, for 22, E3-2254, the relevant ERNs are 00 in Khmer, 00 Six. In French, zero zero eight three four eight five three. And in English, zero zero seven eight nine seven zero seven zero seven. The other document I mentioned, which is the Confession of Rin, is document E3-7403. Mr. Witness, had you ever heard that Rin was arrested and taken to S21? Um, to my knowledge, I uh, did not know. I did not know whether or not uh, he was replaced or he was removed or they did something to him. I did not know. Do you know who it was that replaced Rin? Letter. I heard uh, that Ta Chai, uh, Jay Chaim was the uh, provisional uh, sector committee chair. Just so we're clear, Jay Chaim is that the same person as Im Chan, a woman from the southwest zone? Man. Yes, uh, she was from oui. the southwest Elle zone. Du Sud Do you know who Question. it was that was the sector chief immediately before Rin? Who, who Rin replaced chef du as tout the chief of Rin. sector 5? En fait, qui Rin a-t-il remplacé en tant que chef du sector 5? The immediate uh, predecessor of Ren was uh, Chil. Chil was on Chil. provisional appointment Chil after Tahung. And is Chil the son of Runim? Chil était il le fils de Rosnim? Réponse. That 
that I heard uh, from others, uh, I did not know it myself, uh, that he was the son of Rohniam. Do you recall when it was that Rin became the sector chief and when he disappeared? Can you give us an approximate month and year for those two events? It was uh, sometime in uh, early 1977 or towards the middle of the year. I did not recall the uh, exact date. I'm, I'm not clear on which of the two dates I asked about your answering, but maybe it's my fault for asking for two things at once. Let's go to when the issue of when Rin disappeared was no longer the sector chief. Do you remember how long that was before the Vietnamese came? Was it a few months or more than a year? Oh, I can recall it. It was in early 1978. Okay, thank you. Do you recall for about how long Rin was the chief of the sector? He was the chief of Sector 5 for not for long. Uh, it was a little over one year, or one year, I guess. I did not actually uh, calculate it at the times, but it was about one year. Sir, I believe you earlier talked about Mong as being the person who replaced Lung as the district chief in Preya, Net Preya. Do you know what happened to Mong? Mong was arrested and he disappeared since then. Do you recall what year? He was arrested. Question. Vous souvenez-vous de l'année de sa disparition? It's a bit difficult. Uh, it could have been in early 1977. Uh, I I do not recall it well. Thank you. What about his deputy? Do you recall his name? Et son adjoint. And can you tell us whether he was? Non, le son adjoint. Arrested. Vous souvenez-vous s'il a été arrêté? As for his deputy, he was arrested as well. Is that Sam Ah? Question inaudible du procureur. Yes, Ah. Did you know a question? Before Chiel was the sector chief, who was the sector chief? Avant que Chiel soit le chef du secteur, qui était celle le chef? Ta Hung. Mo Hung. Ta Hung. What happened to Ta Hung? Ta Hung. Question. Qu'est-il arrivé à Ta Hung? I did not know the uh, situation at that time, and it was not uh, my business either, but I heard from others that uh, he was arrested and he disappeared.
When did mm, Mr. President? Counsel for Mr. Kusumpond, you may proceed. Counsel Kusumpond, thank you, Mr. President. I would like to ask uh, Mr. Uh, Prosecutor to verify uh, on document E3-2254 uh, concerning a man by the name of Rin. I look uh, at uh, this document. I did not find his name in this document. Can you please uh, clarify this? Um, yes, it's it's on the page uh, in Khmer. It's at the very top of the page. Okay. And I think I read out before the ERN number zero zero eight six zero zero seven six seven six six. It's the very first name on the top of the page. So, uh, Council uh, Mr. Mr. President, I should try to locate the exact page. The name was either Won or Ron, but not, not the name that the prosecutor uh, spelled. Your Honours, we read it as Rin, and it says Chief Sector, or he says Secretary Sector 5. Nous le lisons comme Rin, et il est écrit que c'était le secrétaire du secteur 5. But your honors can read it and determine yourselves what it says. Um, sir, do you want to go? But you have some bad news. Mr. President, in the document quoted Mr. by Mr. the co-prosecutor, that is on page four, the full name is Heng Rin. That is on the first line of that page. Thank you. Thank you. So, sir. Can you describe what happened in Prea Prea in Sector 5 with these various arrests without going through many names with you? Can you tell us, you've talked about a number of individuals disappearing. Was there some pattern that you can explain about what happened? What I may uh, know is that uh, for Ce those who disappeared, and here I cannot uh, speak about uh, si other villages, but I villages, speak about the Prenet Preha district, district Prea Prea. Uh, including the names of uh, Tawal, Tamal, Tasam Ad, and Tachang. I uh, knew that uh, they disappeared. Was, did people come in from outside the zone into Sector 5 when you were there during the regime? There was this uh, southwest group uh, that came. What happened regarding arrests and disappearances when the southwest group arrived? Did they stop? Did they increase? Explain what happened. From my understanding, this disappearance had happened uh, before the arrival of the uh, Southwest uh, Group. 
and the disappearance uh, continued after the arrival of the Southwest Group. Okay, thank you. A couple other names quickly to run by you. Tahat from Tamapuk. Do you know someone by that name? Tahat, from what I understand, was not from Tamapuk but from Phnomsrok. He was a former Phnomsrok district. Chief. I don't know, maybe I make a mistake. I'm sure the error is mine. Uh, can you explain what happened to him? Concerning his arrest or disappearance, I cannot tell you the details. However, when people disappeared, we all presumed that they had been arrested. And then I have another name, Ta Peng, which I had listed as Penom Srok, but maybe I misunderstood a previous answer you gave in another interview. Do you know a Ta Peng from Penom Srok? Yes, uh, I knew the pain. The pain was also arrested, and he's from Phnom Penh uh, district. There's another. Um, I want to read something else to you. It's from a book. It's E3 1593 the Kiernan book, the ERN in Khmer is 0063-7738. In French, the ERN is 0063-39-009. And in English, 00 Six, seven, eight, six, one, six. And in this book, the author wrote, Sir, please listen carefully. In Prayanet Praya, the base people also suffered from the Southwest domination. Por says that he had been on good, good terms with the Northwest cadres, quote, who were their children and relatives, unquote. But the Southwesterners killed these local cadres, alienating the peasantry and producing a new solidarity between new and base people. Local peasants concur. Sarun, working in the district Chalet, recalls the arrival of male and female cadres from the southwest in early 1977. They were very tough and began a large-scale series of arrests and execution. Anyone in any way connected with the Lon Nol government disappeared, including former village chiefs and school teachers and people who had been Lon Nol soldiers even just for one day. Sarun's boyhood friend from his village was arrested and killed. Did you, sir, ever have any experience uh, along these lines? When the Southwest cadres came, did you see them? Was there any new effort to look for Lon Nol? persons with a background in the Law Nol Army or government?
Mr. Witness, please hold on, Monsieur and Councilor Copper, do you have the floor? Um, I have an objection to this question, objection I think for various reasons. Um, first of all, um, it's a leading question in the sense that this witness has not been asked any questions so far to this witness as um, the alleged fate of law and officials. Um, so I think uh, it would be now standard practice to first ask an open question uh, whether this witness knows anything about this, then possibly confront him with this excerpt from uh, Kirna. Um, I also have an objection uh, to this particular excerpt because we have no idea who uh, the sources are that Kirna is uh, basing himself upon. Plus, um, uh, the excerpt uh, looks or, or seems to um, look at the treatment of base people um, and has nothing to do with the arrests that we were just um, uh, uh, talking about. Plus, uh, and in addition, this witness has said um, that Rin, who had replaced, who had replaced um, Hun, was a Southwest Zone cadre. He was a very mild um, and very fair person, so I'm not quite sure where um, this is all coming from. So I have an objection on uh, various grounds, multiple grounds. Thank you. First of all, Your Honor, thank, uh, when counsel says that the witness said that Rin was a mild-mannered and fair person, I don't recall him saying that. I recall him saying Rin worked would come to the work site and would work himself. That's a different quality. Secondly, regarding the sources, in fact, they are named. The names are given in Kiernan's book of the people that he has interviewed, both in the text and in footnotes. And of course, that would go to the weight in any event. In regards to the issue of whether or not this is relevant, um, in my understanding of the defense, particularly the Nunchia defense, is it's their position that the Southwest Zone had an order from Tamok not to touch Lon no officers, that the, law, that the policy of the Southwest was not to touch them. So it's directly relevant to that defense contention unless they have abandoned it. And I did ask the witness about the pattern of arrests, an open question, once the Southwest Zone came. Now I'm asking him to comment on this more specific discussion of the pattern. May I proceed? But, but we, sorry. Yes, then the objection by the Defense Council is overruled. However, the co-prosecutor, please rephrase your question. Sir, when the Southwest Zone came into the uh, into your area, were there any particular kinds of people that they were looking for as far as you could determine by who they arrested or what questions they asked? At that time, I was uh, at the mobile unit, so I was not... Uh, quite familiar with what happened at the cooperative. I worked at a far distance from the cooperative, and I did not uh, know what was actually happening at the cooperative itself. Did you ever hear any announcements on the radio after the Southwest came about traders in various parts of the region. Generally speaking, 
communication was very limited uh, during the regime. There was no radio to listen to, for instance. Well, sir, wasn't there Phnom Penh radio? Wouldn't that be broadcast at meetings? To my understanding, no. De ce que j'ai compris, non. Because I did not have any radio to listen to for senior cadres, they might have uh, their own radio to listen to, but uh, not for us. Let me read you another extract from the same book. ERN numbers are in Khmer 006-37984. French zero zero six three nine two zero two at the bottom and on to the next page. And in English it's zero zero six seven eight seven one zero. It says in region five <coughs> in mid nineteen seventy seven Runim's son Dio was briefly taken over had briefly taken over from Hing as secretary of sector of region five. He was now replaced by a southwest zone cadre Heng Rin in late 1978, Western zone officials had already begun to take over the Sisyphon district or region 5. Refugees reported that under the old leaders, a lot were allowed to slip by, but the new leaders punished every infraction. They were unbearable. On 26 June, Western units took over the Tama Pok district headquarters, also in Region 5. They, quote, arrested the five-man ruling committee and disarmed the 100-man district civil militia. From there, the operation fanned out là, to the district's 15 cooperatives, unquote. Then on 5 Puis, July, 5 juillet, the newcomers officially announced that of the 70,000 citizens in the district, 40,000 were traitors who had collaborated with the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency and concealed the names of former Lon Nol soldiers and agents of Thailand and Vietnam. Sir, do you recall any announcement that people from this district, from Tama Pok, were traitors who had collaborated with the CIA, Vietnam, and Thailand? I did not know this matter that well. When the Vietnamese arrived, we all fled. And I did not know about uh, this uh, announcement. Tmopo was far from the uh, mobile unit location, so I was not aware of that matter. Okay, thank you. Sir, did you know the name of Rin's wife? Connaissez-vous le nom de la femme de Rin? No, I don't. I don't know her name. Did you know if Rin had a 13-year-old niece? Rin avait une nièce de 13 ans. No, I'm not aware of that.
Your Honor, the previous document that I had mentioned, E32254, also lists women's, a woman on the same page and a 13-year-old girl on the same page below Heng Rin's name. <coughs> Sir, I'm almost finished with my questions for you. I'd like to end by asking you for a reaction um, to something Q Sam Khan has written. And this is page E, this is document E3 slash 18. In Khmer, it's 0010 3878. In French, it's 00 And in English, it's 00 wrote, Maybe it was naive for me to allow myself to become obsessed by the dam reservoir complexes, the seawalls and the canals that began to appear and which raised the prospects of the modern Cambodian countryside for which I had long hoped. Maybe it was naivete that finally brought me to trust Paul Pot to submit to the general discipline and to cloister myself in his, in his headquarters without the slightest idea of his ultra-radical policy and his brutal methods were bleeding the nation dry and making it a weak defendant against Vietnam. First of all, sir, did you notice among the leadership an obsession with building dams? It is difficult for me to Réponse. respond to this question. Pour moi de à cette question. I think the uh, force was simply a tool to, to be used uh, by them. But uh, when you talk about uh, obsessiveness, uh, I don't know what to say. Would you agree with Q. Sampan that Pol Pot's ultra-radical policy and brutal methods bled Cambodia dry and made it weak against Vietnam? Witness, please hold on. And Defense Counsel for Kyo Sampon, you had the floor. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. Je pense Mr. que uh, je suis obligé d'objecter à ce stade. Uh, la réponse précédente uh, de Monsieur le témoin est très claire. Nous ne sommes pas face à un témoin expert. On lui pose des questions sur ce qu'il a vécu, sur ce que lui éventuellement, uh, uh, ce dont il peut témoigner, mais poser des questions générales uh, après une lecture générale uh, d'un document de Kyo Sampon qu'il ne connaît pas. Je pense que ce n'est pas dans les uh, attributions de Monsieur le témoin. To uh, provide much information here. I'm happy to rephrase the question. Sir, based upon your Monsieur own experience, what you saw in Praia Net Praia, Champang, Tamal Dam, did you see ultra radical policies inflicted upon the ordinary people? Based upon the arrests and the disappearances that you witnessed, did you believe that this ended up making the country weaker? Did you observe that? It is difficult for me to respond to your question. I was a very, at a very uh, low rank uh, 
J'étais vraiment tout au level. I never thought about this matter. Et je n'ai jamais réfléchi I was, à cette uh, question. Trying to, uh, survive and trying to earn juste de my living et and I never uh, have paid attention to that. Je pas vraiment fait that would be the matters to be dealt with by the upper cette level. Cette question-là a été abordée par les choses supérieures. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I don't have further questions. I turn it over to my colleagues from civil parties. Je souhaite céder la parole à mes collègues des partis civils. President, the political lawyers for civil parties, you have the floor. Some good afternoon, some good afternoon, Mr. President, Your Honours. We uh, seek your leave to allow the lawyer for civil parties, J.C. now to put question to this witness, and after that, uh, the international lead co-lawyer will uh, take the floor. Thank you. President, yes, uh, you may proceed. This evening, uh, thank you, Mr. President, remercie, and good afternoon, Mr. President, Your Honours, and uh, everyone Monsieur in President, and around Monsieur the courtroom. And good Bonjour. afternoon, Mr. Uh, witness. My Monsieur name is Tisina. I am a lawyer Bonjour. representing Bonjour. civil Bonjour. parties. Before I put some questions to you, I'd like to uh, get your clarification on certain responses uh, you provided to the international co-prosecutor this morning, as well as uh, for this afternoon session. You were asked uh, about uh, the reassignment, your reassignment, and you stated that at that time you dare not uh, refuse the reassignment, although you were reassigned to carry a number one fertilizer. And that you were afraid. My question to you is the following. Ma question est donc la suivante. Was your superior aware of all the natures of tasks uh, that uh, were assigned to you? Answer. At that time, someone was uh, assigned to be responsible for monitoring the activities of us carrying fertilizer, and that uh, the uh, kind of chain of command uh, put in place at the time. Question. So for people who did the same kind of work like you, you were constantly under uh, a mon monitoring system by someone. Is my understanding correct? Answer, uh, yes, from my observation, the uh, monitoring was uh, constant. They would uh, monitor us, moni monitor us, and see how much work we produce, for example, on a weekly basis. Question. Question. What kind of uh, people were those that came to monitor that your activities, and what kind of clothes uh, they were wearing? Et quels vêtements portaient ces personnes Answer. Réponse. Uh, the clothing was black in color, and we Les knew some of them, noire. but uh, not all. Nous en connaissions certains, mais pas tous. And they were uh, tasked uh, to monitor et our activities, de and activités. we did not dare to ask them any questions. Nous n'osions nous n'osions pas leur poser de questions. Question. Question. And do you know from which level the assignment uh, was made to those people to monitor your activities? L'instruction à l'intention de ces personnes qui consistait à leur demander de vous surveiller. Answer. Réponse. To my understanding, they de were assigned by uh, persons who were in charge of uh, the. Uh, 
uh, sector and they would uh, occasionally come and monitor our activities. Question. Was only your group under uh, monitoring? Or were all workers under this kind of a monitoring system? Answer. They would monitor all workers who were assigned to work with fertilizer. They would see how much we had produced or if there was any shortage, what was the reason for such shortage? Question, let me go back a little bit uh, to the time when you were as an assistant to Taval. Was, were you also under uh, this monitoring system when you worked there? Answer. Because I was uh, one of the six or seven assistants. Comme je faisais partie des cinq ou six assistants. And uh, usually I was assigned to a specific location in order to lend my my hand. Où je devais prêter main forte. And. I try my best to educate and advise uh, those youths to work uh, harder. That's why I uh, worked as uh, an assistant. Question. question, allow me to refresh my question. It seems that you don't understand it fully. My question to you is, uh, is that while you were working as a Taval's assistant, and yes, uh, Taval might have uh, several other assistants besides you, while you worked for him, were you or all assistants uh, being monitored, that is, uh, for the activities that you did, or you could just uh, carry out uh, the task uh, freely without being monitored. Answer. Of course, we, did, we could not make any decision on our own. Instructions had to come from the above. For example, a worker had to work a two cubic meter uh, plot of land each day. Then instructions had to be relayed to other workers to complete the work a quarter. And the decision was not ours. Question. Question. And while you were working for Taval, what were the kinds of work that Taval gave you? Quel genre de tâches lui vous confiait-il? And uh, in my capacity as an assistant, and adjoint, one of those six or seven assistants, uh, uh, parmi six ou sept autres adjoints, I was probably the last uh, on the queue of the assistants to the wall, and the work that was given to me was Donc, of a, a minor nature. On des so usually it has to deal with uh, reinforcing the uh, daily quota and after I relate those instructions to the workers then I would uh, report to him that at a parti particular location of the work site the work quota was uh, completed. I have another question uh, concerning Taval. So the task assigned to you and you delegated further down uh, the line was the instruction from Taval or it was the decision of the collective meeting and then the work is or the task uh, assigned uh, to you.
they uh, there was a meeting. They convened a meeting of uh, the members uh, before they assigned the task to us. Des membres avant de nous confier la tâche. Question. Then uh, it was not the discretion of the Val uh, alone, right, to uh, 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 assign uh, the work or task uh, to you, but actually it was the uh, decision of the collective committee meeting for the delegation of task uh, to you and your uh, subordinates. Is that correct? Response. Response. Yes, that is correct. Oui. And then uh, they for, uh, they uh, delegated it uh, further down le uh, the line. Et ensuite, Question. Son cours le long de la uh, now I turn to Question. the issue of the rice distribution. Uh, this morning, you uh, answer to questions by the prosecutor concerning matin, this uh, topic. Uh, you said uh, that sujet. one person was uh, given three cans of rice uh, per day, and uh, you said uh, that the rice uh, was distributed to the Et mobile uh, brigade. Uh, is that correct? Response. To my knowledge, only uh, the mobile unit uh, forces were uh, distributed les... with the rice, and they were given three cans of rice uh, per person. As for those who work in the cooperatives, I did not have uh, the knowledge of as to how many cans of rice uh, they received. Question. So the distribution of three cans uh, of rice per day, uh, when did it start? Uh, did it start when the uh, construction of the Bankmore Dam uh, commenced? Or um, it was only distributed at the beginning of the uh, construction uh, dates? Response. Réponse. To my recollection, it was not a regular distribution at that time, because whenever they had to reinforce uh, the uh, constructions, then they had to uh, provide uh, more rice for them. There were rice reserve uh, for them, and others could have uh, some would have one. A uh, can and a half uh, per day, Certains and at other times they had only one can of rice or even half a can of rice or nothing at all. Uh, question. So question. you are saying that uh, there were times when you were not given donc, not even a can of rice per day. Uh, is that correct? Rien du tout? Response. Réponse. Yes, I myself also uh, oui. did not receive uh, the uh, rice uh, in certain days. De ne pas de riz certain, certain jours. Even the rice brain, uh, we, uh, we had to have uh, rice brain at that time. Question. You used to live at the uh, construction site, even though you were in the mobile brigade. Uh, you might have uh, heard or you uh, may have uh, seen uh, the scene at the construction site. I would like you to uh, tell uh, the court about the overall working conditions of people at the work site. The working condition overall Réponse. for the people over there, uh, at the early Les days of the construction, uh, some had to work even at night. Début, and then later on, uh, they uh, did not do uh, suite, at night. Uh, but at the uh, beginnings, uh, they started working uh, during début, the night times as well, starting from 7 p.m. in the evening. Heures. 
Thank you. Question. Question. Do you know Merci. why they were required to work at night? Savez-vous pourquoi il fallait travailler la nuit? Response. Réponse. That was my personal um, understanding. D'après ma compréhension. If they had the target uh, to accomplish, for example, uh, the construction of the dam of one uh, kilometer length, and they wanted to complete it within certain numbers a day, and then they had to uh, try to uh, complete it within the time frame. Thank you. Question. Question. I am interested in one point uh, that you uh, mentioned. You said that if uh, they uh, set the target to be accomplished, uh, they had to do everything to accomplish it. So in the construction of this uh, dam, what was the uh, plan? Uh, do you have uh, any idea as to uh, how long the project had to be completed? Response. Actually, I distributed uh, rice to them. Generally, we distributed the rice when they had to complete or they had to do uh, intensifying job. For example, uh, if uh, they set the target that they had to complete this uh, project within this date, uh, we reinforced uh, the force, and then we distributed uh, the rice accordingly, and they had to uh, make effort to complete uh, that uh, project. The President, thank you, uh, lawyer. The time is now appropriate for a short recess, and we shall adjourn now and resume at 3.30. Uh, 3, rather, um, this afternoon. Court officer, please assist the witness and his duty counsel during the recess. The President, uh, counsel, if you have any Questions. You may proceed. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, très brièvement, simplement you, pour President. permettre que durant la pause, uh, Monsieur le Coprocureur puisse that, regarder uh, le document et répondre à la question que je vais poser. Um, au sujet de Engrin, il a cité deux documents. Uh, E3 uh, 7403 en anglais uh, qui uh, a trait à uh, une confession de Engrin sur le, la version en Khmer que nous avons Également, E3-7403, il y a une distinction. Il ne s'agit pas, a priori, du même Engrin. Dans la version Khmer, E3-7403, on a Engrin, mais qui n'est pas du secteur 5, qui serait d'une compagnie de pompiers. Donc, euh, si c'est possible de vérifier euh, euh, s'il n'y a pas effectivement une erreur, et euh, peut-être que c'est un problème de cotation, mais en tout cas, euh, c'est la distinction et l'erreur que nous avons constatée entre les deux versions. Donc, euh, si c'est possible de vérifier ça pendant la pause, pour nous Okay. In the two versions, if the co-prosecutor can cross-check that, that would be most useful for us. And court officer, please uh, have the uh, witness uh, during the break and then have you back in this courtroom before 3 p.m. The court is now in recess.